Hi, hello, mabuhay. Thank you so much. Good, good evening over there in... Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> in Las Vegas right now. Wow, that's you really right. look so telegenic in person. I mean, you could Thank really you so pass much. off as a... As a BL actor <laughs> in Thai dramas. <laughs> uh, thank yes. you so much. Wait. You have to watch Thai drama, right? Do you love acting? Yeah, I love acting. I got study for the for the class for the acting class before. Yeah, but like back 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 there, like many many years ago. Yeah, so <laughs> it's time to meet you. How have you been? How is the COVID situation there in Nevada right now? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, I'm so glad to like to talk to you. I know you. And then uh, the pandemic right here, I think everything is getting better. Uh, like normal already, like everywhere, they open 100% already right here because most of the people, we get the vaccination already and the restaurant, theater, school, even the everything right here is open like normal yeah uh the people don't need to wear our masks anymore yeah we live like normal right now what was the first thing that you did as soon as the restrictions eased up there in nevada well the first thing i went to thai restaurant of course because i miss my thai food so bad because back then we cannot dine in right just order like to go to take away like eat outside but when like everything is like open, reopen, hundred percent. I just went to a Thai restaurant with my friend. Yeah, it's a like, big group, and we order a lot of food. Yeah, <laughs> because I cannot fly back to Thailand right now. To yeah, I like, have to do quarantine for fourteen days. That's yeah, why they... I go to Thai restaurant again. Yeah, Thailand is very strict when it comes to implementing yes, right their now, yeah. health and safety protocols. But you know what? I really love Thai food. I really oh, love really? Thai food. Okay. Even yes, there, I when think? I go to the States, I would usually go to a Thai restaurant. I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I don't like much spicy, but I can eat a lot of pad thai in one city. And wow. Thai tea, Thai milk tea, and um, mango sticky rice. Uh, oh, even if I'm not doing for anything in a day. Yeah, I love everything about Thailand. You know, it's on you. You know, um, how are you feeling right now that you are about to compete for Mr. World K America soon? Uh, right now, I'm feeling like so exciting for that. And I know that I have to like to prepare myself and I still like keep learning every single day. Yeah, I got trained a lot, even by the workout or Q&A or stuff like runway and everything yeah so i want to improve myself to get ready on that final day and it's showing it seems like you're a confident man as you are about to compete for the pageant soon now i want to ask you first can you introduce yourself a little can you tell can you share something a little bit of yourself to all my viewers who are watching right now who may not yet be familiar with you uh Hi, I'm Jack Tai Tas. Uh, I was born in Thailand, but right now I live in USA and I joined to the Mr. K world because I see a lot of different between Thailand and here about the equality. Like it's a lot of different, not even like same equality. So I want to fight for our people or LGBTQ to have like same equality in the world. That's why I try to have a bigger voice and join on this pageant. Yes, and right now I'm studying for the medicals and stand in University of Nevada, uh, Nevada, Las Vegas as well. Wow, you are a frontliner too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one is what I want to do. Second one is my dream. So I have to follow the two things. Oh, that's nice. Wow. Not only you have a very relevant advocacy, but your profession is very in demand nowadays, right? Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you have an ample medical knowledge or background about anything that's about anything that's happening right now, it will really serve you in good stead, right? Yeah, that's right. And I believe that like what I'm studying, right? Uh, I think I can help like those people, even about the LGBTQ or like our state guy or no matter 
what people in the world. But I think I can have like if I have opportunity, I will help all of them. But I think what did I learn? Yeah, I can help a lot of people. Wow, a big heart for your community. You're so generous. I could really feel it as early as now. So I want to ask, since you introduced yourself earlier that you moved to the state, what age did you move there in the U.S. and why did you move there? Uh, actually, I moved here like just three, four years ago. Yeah, I moved here because first of all, I come here for the study, right? Then uh, for three years well, first, after that, go back to Thailand and come here for the study. Yeah, and I decided and I got the scholarship from University of Nevada, Las Vegas. That's why I decided to live here in Las Vegas. Yeah, and my so how day. has the big move so far? So you're the only wow. one who's there in Las Vegas. Yes, right. So I think everything is like how they call that culture shock, right? Yeah. Like even the language, not same. I speak Thai language in my Thai life, food. People, the right here is so hot and dry in Thailand, hot but like humid, right? I think everything yes, is like yes. totally different. Yeah, the language, right? Uh, I need to say thank you to my parents first. They sent me to the, to the school, the one like bilingual school, right? So I can speak English already, but I didn't use that because, like, for Thai people, we're not gonna speak English with each other. They kind of think like, why are you so yes. weird? Yeah, we speak full in Thai, why you have to speak English? So I didn't use that. But when I came here, then about the language is like, you know, in the first week, okay, let's say, I just moved to the apartment, right, in the first week in my college. And then I got the mail from my family in Thailand, they mailed to me. Then I go talk to the office. They don't even understand what I want from them. <laughs> like the first week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's really fun. I'm glad that you're doing. I'm glad that you are, you know, doing okay there. You have you have quite adjusted very well in your current setup, right? So let's talk about your childhood. You know, um, of course you moved there, but most of your formative years were spent in Thailand. So can you, um, how was it like um, growing up in Thailand? Have did when at what age did you realize that you were actually gay? Okay, like first of all, I need to say that back then when I was in Thailand when I'm studying for the uh, in the secondary school, I got bullied every single day, and I don't like that moment in my life because I have no one to talk to. I cannot talk to my parents back then. I cannot talk to my friend, even the friend like classmate. They are so bully me because they think I'm really friend. But back then when you was young, right? You just like 13 years old. One thing you want in your life is a friend. But you don't have any friend. You just got bullied. You when like all that, when you have lunch in the canteen, you have to eat by yourself alone and yeah, stuff like that. But after that, I realized that when the people who was young, they don't have someone to talk to right here. Just be you. And one day everything is gonna become better and everything is gonna be great for you. But I think on this like generation, it's really open. Not saying like 10 years ago when I was in Thailand back then. I think right now, yeah, we are open. Yeah, but I believe that even today we are open like this, right? Still got some people get bullied from being a gay. So yeah, I don't like that. And how I realized I'm, I'm being a gay, right? I think I realized when I was born. <laughs> so yeah, when I see the guy who played a soccer, like a football, stuff like that, uh, I think, wow, that is hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I just, but you so young, then you didn't know that it's like, it's normal or not normal, right? Yeah, you think like, oh, anyone is gonna be the same. Yeah, so, but I just, I try to, when I realized that, I try to dating with the girl before because I try to stop to being a gay because yeah, I don't like to be a gay because you got bullied every day. You don't have no friend. You don't have someone to talk to your life. It's like so sad, you know, that's why. Okay. Today I wake up and then, okay, I will stop to being a gay. I will do everything, whatever. But after that, in the end, I realized like this myself. That's why like, yeah, I'm proud of myself and it's myself. And one thing, 
this one is not in your question, but I want to say that a lot of people asking me why I don't join the male pageant at the first job in at the first pageant. I say I'm proud to be a gay. Yeah, that's why I want to help LGBTQ and gay is all over the world. Yeah, because I know how they feel. Yeah, I don't want to lie to myself and I want to help them. Yeah, really bad. That's it. Wow. I hope that a lot of young gay kids are watching this interview to see that, you know, it's okay to be a gay, it's okay to grow up as a gay person, that it's, that's normal, there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of it. So I'm glad that you were able to overcome a lot of challenges about it when you were growing up. Now, I, wanna, I, want, I want to ask you right now. How did you tell your parents that you were gay? For sure, I know they were a bit sad when they when they found out. So, how what was the process like? Can you can you share the process okay. of when opening up to your parents? I, yeah, when I come out, I believe that it's gonna be like seventeen or eighteen year old. Yeah, and I think my mom, I didn't I didn't tell her because when I told her, she say, "Oh, I already already know that." They say you don't surprise or nothing. She say no, I I been with you like for how many years? I know that. Then she say don't tell your dad at the beginning, because my dad he is a military, he is a navy, so he is really a strict person. I have to wake up at the same time every day. like my routine is like uh, from the army routine, you know. Yeah, he is a really strict person. And after that, I think one day I think, oh, back then I have a boyfriend, so. <laughs> but I bring him come back to my house all the time. Then we stay in the same room. We eat. We have dinner together, right? And one day, I think we went to the restaurant, and I said, "Dad, I have something to tell you. This guy, he's not my friend. He's my boyfriend." Then he was so shocked, and he said, "Like, he called the waiter and excuse me, may I have one more beer?" And he just drink like, <laughs> like the whole bottle, finish it. Then he he talked to me like. Okay, no matter what you wanna be, if you be a good guy, if if you can do a thing you want, I still be here to support you. No matter what you be, you are gay or you are not, you are still my son. Yeah, and just follow your dream. That's all. Make me cry so 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 bad because I think it's for me it's really hard time to tell him because I think he is a very strict and yeah, it's this kind of person. And but when I come out, he is like. I feel really warm for my family. That's why, like, they support me everything. Even I joined the pageant for the Mr. K World. They support me every single thing I want to be in my life. Yeah, I'm so happy to have like come out on that time. Yeah, listening to you right now, listening to your story, you know, I'm glad that you have a very supportive set of parents to support you to back you up in everything that you have been doing. So. I would like to ask you, what would you tell someone or a young gay kid whose parents are still disapproving of her, of his status as a gay man, in hopes that this that this young kid would still be to become straight okay, and not be so, gay? Okay, like first of all, I need to say you cannot shame anyone. What they born, they're gonna be. They're gonna be born and be like that. And if you want your son to have their own happiness, don't force them to do nothing they don't like. If they want to be a gay, just support it. For me, I'm just a normal guy, ordinary guy, right? For my family, I got bullied when I was young, when I was a kid. But right now, I'm stand here to call out for LGBTQ, not even in USA, to call out for over the world. So I believe that no matter gender you are, you can be successful in your life if you try that hard enough. So for the young kid, I want you, you guys to believe in yourself and be happy with the, every step you walk. And if you're happy, you start from your happiness, right? I think everything is going to be easy. Even your mom, your parents, and your dad and everything, they're going to understand because they saw from the outside and inside. You are a good kid. You are a good guy. Yeah. No matter can be bad thing to you. But if some family, I understand that, like, they don't even understand, right, about, like, why you must be a gay, stuff like that. I just want to say, just give them a time. 
because anyway you are their son you are their kid or whatever in the end in one day they're gonna accept you yeah no matter what because like yeah just give them a time true that. yeah i agree with you so as you narrate your story you know i feel like i can really resonate with your story because i was also bullied because for the same reason oh, wow. i would like to ask how did you get or develop your confidence as you grow up to become a young fine gay man in thai society how did you develop your confidence because let's face it we're all you are being bullied like you know jack titus is gay nah, he's gay he's gay he's being taunted yeah, he's being right. bullied so how did how did you not let it affect your self-confidence your assurance about everything that you have been doing instead in terms of in relation to your career goals or what you want to achieve in life yeah like first of all i need to say that when i feel like back then when i got bullied right, I, i really feel bad but when i growing up then i realized that like if no one wants to be your friend it's okay you just be a good guy if you want to study just go for education you don't have no friend no worry read the book the book is your best friend for eu education and one day if you're successful in your life everything gonna come through to you yeah i believe that that's why like i just turned my scar from my heart that's pain right to the victory because i believe that i believe in myself like i'm normal i can do that if you can do this i can do this too why not right yeah so that's why i just have to change your mindset first yeah like you are normal have to be normal have to think like you are normal you're not different you're confident yeah do every do whatever make you happy yeah and then if someone don't want to be your friend it's okay but you're gonna have true friend but if someone come be and be your friend right they're gonna be a you are really good friend and gonna be you are like you are really good supporter yes so it's nice to see yeah i agree with you it's nice to see that you need to develop a good set of friends or support system behind you so that's yes, right uh your being your well-being won't be affected as you go by in life yes i'm glad that you were able to develop that kind of people around you to nurture your gifts and talents despite you know coming out as gay but before we proceed can we greet a lot of people who are tuned in right now there are seven people who are watching um franz ivan my friend is watching thank you franz um at a lot of thai fans are watching p my Borkumpai is saying hi jack hi jack love you from thailand um kretapat misuk um is saying a lot of things about you hi jack i love your attitude i will support you for your upcoming pageant thank you so much for supporting oh, this one Ed. Uh, he's my teacher in my high school back then in thailand oh yeah he's really supportive even Hi, you know yeah, he's still supporting me until now you see if you bring yourself to the right right position right no matter what you get in your life you're gonna be like happy with it oh so <laughs> moving forward since you moved to nevada four years ago how has your outlook in life changed wow like i told you everything is like totally changed like 100 percent, right i have yeah like i have no friend no family here no nothing at the beginning yeah then i don't even know like where the restaurant where the shopping mall where the gas station yeah but i learned that so fast because i am the one like i believe i'm a fighter and i believe that no matter what i do i'm gonna do like do my best so back then i walk you know i try to walk i don't know how many mile how many kilometer it's been so long way to know like okay this one is the bank this one is the gas station i get to know more yeah at the beginning but after that when i you see it when i know everything i think everything is for like easy yeah like my life back then even no matter i think i believe that if i move to the philippines and live there i think i gonna cancel why and gonna be successful there too because i believe in potential in myself yeah and i love all the people who live here so 
has your views also changed? Because let's face it, America is very different uh, thinking compared to the conver- conservatism of Asian countries like Thailand and the Philippines. Oh, yeah, that's right. I want to talk about this. Like in Thailand, we have a lot of <clears throat> uh, the, se- the series for the drama, the movie for the gay, LGBTQ stuff yes. like that, right? Yeah, but like uh, technically, we don't even can sign the marriage certificate. Even my friend, she's t- transgender, transform everything already. Everything is like a woman already in the passport still mister so i think that is like how to say that is that that is not fair that anyone in the world they deserve their own happiness and i believe that in not even in thailand in philippines or in asia i think we still need to fight for this for the equality for the asian people yeah that's why i want to call out and speak out if i have a bigger voice is that the reason why you joined mr gay world america Yes, right. That is the big reason because I, I know that like I live with Thai culture back then, right? And after that, I live here with American culture, so I can tell like wow, why they treat people so nice here, and wow, why the government he, you you right here, you stay here, you can do same sex marriage, even when you get sick, your spawn, your partner can sign for the operation, but if in Thailand, if you stay with your boyfriend for ten year. Then your boyfriend have car accident or whatever they need to go operation in the hospital you cannot even sign the paper because you are not their family do you see yourself staying there for good because of everything that you're saying <laughs> that wow. you love everything about it's uh liberalism how you know uh same-sex marriage is not an issue a, a huge deal there in the u.s yeah, I need to say that I love to live here because right here they give me a lot, give me opportunity to live in my life, give me an education, even give me opportunity to join on this pageant. And I didn't born here, so I'm not like American born. But in the end, they still give like opportunity because right here they're looking about the equal. We are like same gender, no matter what color of your skin, no matter what language you speak right here yeah we are same gender even like when i went to the how to say that right here i went to the hospital or stuff like that we don't have official language right here in the, on the paper yeah but we speak english to communicate to each other i went to the hospital they also have an assistant can speak a lot can speak thai speak spanish so right here i believe that they give like a lot of opportunity to the people yeah so based on everything that you are saying, what do you hope to achieve with your candidacy here in Miss New World America? Uh, so I believe that even right here, I say that we got like equality, right? But something we also not same like a straight guy. Because you know why? Like I do, I work for the, I'm study for the healthcare, right? For the medical fields and the research from 2018 the doctor right here still say no to do with the patient if they are transgender if they are gay even right yes here. yeah then i feel like oh my god i feel so bad because i'm study for that if someone the patient walk walking to the door and asking me yeah i'm sick i need help whatever i will do that i will handle with that no matter like what gender you are what you look like right yeah but even right now in usa we still have that research come out so i think if i have a bigger voice i'm gonna share that too and the second one is about hiv this is a big problem yeah in the world that's why i'm the one who try to give the counseling and like information about the prep and everything how to protect yourself yeah and the last thing about the equality like what i tell you yeah Yes, you know, I really love your views in life and you try to use your influence to reach out to a lot of people that it's okay to be gay, it's okay to be part of the LGBT community. Now, I want to learn more about it. Can you discuss more about your advocacy for the pageant? Yes, sure. My advocacy is called We Are One. 
Yeah, I decided the name because I believe that we are over the world. We are global citizen. We are one, right? Yeah, and then I want to call out, yeah, about the gender equality. Yeah, of course, because like I think that like young, if I do it right now on my generation, the younger generation of LGBTQ, they're gonna walk through the road, same like what I walk is so easy. So I want to help the people. In the world, not even in the USA, because like got still got sixty eight country, sixty three country in the world. If you are being a gay, you still need to go to the jail to the prison. Yeah, some country they kill you if you being a gay. But when you was born, you cannot tell the god like, okay, I gonna be a man, I gonna be woman, I gonna be gay. You cannot shoot that right. You just born with it. So why you must kill those people or why they must go to the jail? Just they being a gay, they are human. We are human. We are deserve. We are own happiness for our life. Yeah, and I want to inspire the younger generation of LGBTQ. Like, fight for it. I will do my best today for the yeah for the younger generation. We're gonna fight it together. Love that. Yeah. Love that. So, apart from what you said, what concrete steps? Have you actually done to spread it about your "We Are One" advocacy? Uh, right. Uh, I already did right here. Who being a gay in the how to say that? Being a gay like Asian gay who live in USA, because back then you remember in USA we got Asian head, like Asian bully, Asian head. And how you yes, can imagine, yes. yeah, about the COVID nineteen, yeah, stuff like that. Back then, and a lot of Asian who live in Las Vegas, right? Like my friends, like from Vietnam, Philippines, whatever, they got attracted, they got bullied by being an Asian. And when then they being a gay and Asian, they got like, how to say that, like double, you know, how they feel. They don't have someone to talk to. So I. I just go and talk to them and tell them, yeah, everything is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm here to support you. If you have someone to talk, yeah, come and talk to me. That's why I use my platform on the Instagram, Facebook, or whatever I have, like, yeah, to like reach out to people who come and like text me and talk to me, like, hey, um, my life is so tough, like, to be here, okay, yeah, stuff like that. So I start that. And the second thing, right now, I'm. Um, Try to bring my advocacy to work together with the center about the HIV as well. Yeah. There's no doubt that you have been talking a lot of challenges that the gay community is facing. You know, from your from from your uh, views about criminalizing sex marriage, same sex marriage, and how all these issues are even affecting in relation to a lot of social issues happening right now, like the Black Lives Matter, Stop Asian Hate. So I think all these challenges stem from a lot of perceptions mm -hmm. about how we view things. So I want to ask you, what do you think are the perceptions that need to be changed when it comes to our views about homosexuality? And how are you hoping to change that? Uh, I think that, like, first of all, you have to love yourself, believe in yourself first. No matter you are gay or you are by your state or no matter what, right? If you start from self love, I think everything is can run so easy. So I believe that all the people, if they start from love themselves, what if they want to do, what they want to share in this world, we can do it. We can do it together. But I know that you cannot share like like a switch. Cannot switch off in one day. Maybe you take like one week, one month, one year. No one know, right? But if we start to do something today, I think in the future, of course, it's gonna be shared. True, true. I love what you said. And you know, as you compete for Mr. Gay World America representing your state Nevada very soon, of course, you'll be meeting a lot of your fellow contestants. Would you know how many? Would it be 51? Because uh, there 50, are 51 states in America. Uh, 50, yeah. 
50. And each one of you will definitely be bringing your own set of skill set, your skills, talent, and even your network connections to the table. How are you hoping to connect with one another to make a lasting change? Okay. Uh, first of all, I need to say, like, I'm so happy to have my brotherhood, like 50 states from all over the USA, right? Yeah. Right now, we like got the group to talk. Yeah, we become a good friend. And I believe that any single guy, they have their own potential. They, anyone I think that deserve to be the next Mr. K will USA. And for me, but I'm different. I also believe in myself. I have a lot of potential in myself. Yeah, so I believe that I can bring myself on that stage and I'm going to win on that night. Wow, I love your attitude. I can really feel your hunger. And you know, more than winning, it's your your passion to really serve your community to spread awareness. So uh I'm really impressed by this platform that Mr. World that Mr. Gay World has, even if it's only the American franchise. So I wanna ask you now, why is it so important to have like to have a platform like this? Like the one Mr. Gay World America has. What do you think it says about how we view about acceptance and inclusivity? Yeah, okay. So I'm so happy to have this pageant in the world because like mostly the pageant is for the female, for male, right? So I'm happy to have this platform because I believe that in any single country in the world, they have one representative, right? So we can call out about their problem in their own country. And then when the international pageant is coming, yeah, we can talk like, okay, what's wrong with your country? What the problem in my country? We can like describe. And after that, we are LGBTQ community, right? We can make it better, better, and better. Because anywhere in the world right now, yeah, for sure, we still have something, not something, I think a lot of things to fix and to share it to be better i agree i agree i think as you keep it talking like, about it more people will be aware about it more people will be not say force but more people will try to probably think about their views you know we check their views again yes right and you i think uh anyone also know that we don't have that much platform for the gay people who come and call out Right, if not like for the in entertainment industry, so we don't have any like pageant. I think this one is must be like one and only for the gay pageant. But if I'm not wrong, yeah, yeah, because yeah, we don't have any place to call out about this problem about our problem in our community. That's why I, I'm like I have a lot of passion. That's why I join here because I think I I want to help. True. I could really feel your big heart. Yes. I can really feel, you know, the passion in your voice that you really want to get out there and do something for your community. I could really feel it. You could re you are really a good role model. So as as early as now, congratulations to you in advance. And I hope that you will really you, you know the, the judges will really take notice of you once you compete for the pageant two months from now. So how are you preparing for it? Are you very, very, very excited? Wow, first of all, I need to say I have a lot of passion to join on this pageant. I prepare myself a lot. How to say that? Really, really a lot, yeah. I prepare how to walk, how to dance, Q&A, strategy, national costume, formal costume, streamer, and I'm so happy I create my team by myself because I got that RL from the Philippines. Yeah, he's like helping me a lot for the strategy, for the pageant, and for the Q&A coach. Yeah, like you guys know already, Miss Universe Thailand 2019, yeah, far side, yeah. So I reached out her to come and teach me how to answer the Q&A question. And right now, I think we we still, I don't know how many times already I talked to Farsai, like more than 10 already because we meet 
by Zoom every single week. Yeah, and okay, I got the. I didn't show anyone before, but I'm gonna show you the first one. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. What? What the? Oh, Taliji, what did I learn from my iPhone fast side and everything? Yeah. And for the national costume, yes, I use the one who do for the Amanda of them on Miss Universe this year. Yeah. But I'm the one who drawing and give them the idea. After that, the designer, they design from me and they shipping from Thailand to here. And so I what's already, the inspiration? Yeah, I got it already in my house. I sit here, right there. I can I can see my costume. <laughs> what is the inspiration behind your costume? Uh, uh, when you I reflect Nevada, that. Yeah, so I represent Nevada, right? So the costume is going to be like Las Vegas, stuff like that. Yeah. It's going to be the secret. You're oh, going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Blow us away once it finally comes out. Now you talk about FASI. I want to ask you, what advice did you learn or that you are learning from FASI that you are taking to heart seriously for this competition? Wow, like I learned a lot. You also know Fasai, she the fighter, right? She joined for the pageant many, many times until she like gets success on the Miss Universe Thailand 2019. And she done like she don't keep up all the time. She come back. She be the better version all the single time. And then she taught me a lot of things, not even only for the Q and A question. She she also taught me like, okay. Don't give up. Follow your dream. No matter you fail, you just be the first runner up, or you just don't have any place. But if you have your dream, just go for it. And she like inspire me a lot. Whatever she say, I'm a good student. I I listen and I write it down. Yeah. And then she really helping me because this one is my first pageant. I didn't interview. I didn't talk with anyone like I talking to you right now. I didn't do that in my entire life. Yeah, so it's my first time, and she taught me a lot. And yeah, right now I think the way I talk to you, I more relaxed, more comfortable, getting better. More than the first time I reached out to Fasai. Yeah, I'm curious to ask: Is she a very strict teacher? Totally hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> she not I even imagine. the same Fasai you look on the stage because I'm the one of a uh, Fasai big fan, right? So yes. when I'm reaching out, yeah. But I also told her this one, like, oh, I didn't realize you're gonna be teach me like really strict teacher. I think you're gonna be like like more fun or more yeah, more stuff like that. But she say I already choose Fasai, I already shoot her to come and teach me, right? So she gonna do the best. And she have oh I don't know this one can say or not. She have a book for the strategy from the First beginning for the first pageant, second, third, even for the Miss Universe, what they ask, which day, what she do, and everything. And she like, I learned from yeah. the real experience, yeah, from who the one who joined for the pageant. That's nice. That's nice yeah. to have a mentor like her who, will, who, you know, who would really share her wisdom and experience to yes, someone right. like you who's also an aspiring, you know, as an aspiring king for this for this pageant that you are joining. I can't wait. I'm I'm sure, you know, FASI has been really training you, advising you with so much passion that she really wants you to succeed. I think, you know, I, she, she really, she put up a academy or a training school in Thailand for, uh, for yeah. all these aspiring beauty queens to who want to join all these national pageants in Thailand. I'm really see, I really love that she's really expanding their spreading her wings very, very big in in her country. Yeah, so send my regards to her. So uh, I even became more excited now that you told us that FASAI is helping you for the upcoming pageant. So <laughs> now, let's do, now let's go to the second portion of the interview where let's talk about more about you as you reveal little bits, pieces of your personality through this FAST talk. Okay. So... Are you ready? This is just going to be fun. Off the top of your head, you're just going to be saying anything that, you know, that immediately pops out of your mind. So are you ready? 
Yes. All right. So this is will be this will be fun, fun and very very quick. Number one, describe yourself in three words. Uh, kind of humble, silly. Silly. <laughs> uh, friendly, not silly. Oh, friend. <laughs> friendly. Yeah. I wanna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thais are really friendly. So yeah. <laughs> so apart from Fasai, who is your favorite beauty queen? So if beauty queen is Pia Alonso was back, she also a fighter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You should really meet her. Just like Fasai, she's very humble and down to earth. You would really love her. Wow. Really? Yeah. I didn't know like in a person. Yeah. But I when I saw the commercial and stuff like that, yeah, I'm, I'm the big fan of her. Hopefully, one day in the not so distant future, you and Pia will cross paths. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you win Mr. Gay World America, there's a bigger chance. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so work hard for it, all right? So, yeah, I will work hard for it. Uh, so let's now go to the guys. Who's your favorite Mr. Gay World winner? Yeah, for sure, it's Chanchep Karos. He's my friend, so he the one inspired me to try on this pageant because he said that like he believes in me. I have a lot of potential, yeah. And he is really best friend, and he from the Philippines, yeah. Yes, I love that. You know, um, he's a very good guy. I haven't met him, but he seems to be a very well educated man. Yes, yes right. And I believe that if I'm not wrong. If the pandemic is getting better on my final competition, he gonna come. Oh, if I'm not wrong, oh. if this, yeah, let, let's oh, see. Oh, oh yes. First, I suddenly got confused because I heard the Mr. Gay, the forthcoming Mr. Gay World pageant, is going to be done online, virtual. But then I realized, okay, you're you're only yet competing for Mr. Gay World America, so it's still a live pageant. Yes, right. It's gonna be live pageant because right now, right here, we like no more already. <laughs> So he will be attending. Oh, so he will be attending the Mr. Gay World America pageant. Yeah, he's gonna come to support me. But if I'm not wrong, I'm not confirmed yet. Because need wow, to see that's... the pandemic first. I don't know. Like it's gonna be three, four more months, right? I don't know. Like in the future, what is gonna be going on on that time? All right. So, oh, this is uh, my next question. Will be quite naughty. So. At what age did you lose your sexual innocence? <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen to a girl? Yes. <laughs> of course, no. For the man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, if you are given a chance to have dinner with a famous person in the world right now, who would it be, and why? Uh, if I can do that right now, I'm gonna do it. Tom Holland because he is my favorite actor. He's so cute and like so nice. Yeah. Is he your crush? <laughs> <laughs> He's my type. <laughs> All right. So speaking of Tom, speaking of Tom Holland, which Avenger hero? Oh, I already said you already said it. Would you like to date and why? Would that... <laughs> <laughs> so the answer, right? Yeah. It's Tom. So even even uh, Chris, um, even if Captain America shows up to your door, you still would ignore him because you want to Tom Holland. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> open the door and say, "Do you want some water? Want to come inside and talk first? Let's <laughs> <laughs> have conversation first. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So all right, next question. Fill in the blank. Gay men are better than straight men in blank. Uh, we are fighter. We are fight for everything. We are fight for our own happiness. We are fight for equality. So I believe that in any gay guy in the world, we are fighter. True. Yeah. Right. So um, if, uh, if a straight man would say, no, we're also a fighter too, what can you say? Oh, I can say I know that anyone in the world, even you are male, female, okay, we are fight, right? But there no need to fight for the equality for someone 
who accept whatever you be you no need you are born straight you no need to tell your parent you no need to fight for your parent you are gay so you don't have that feeling in your life not same like me i have feeling how i come out how i stay in the closet how i need to hide from anyone whatever i be yeah but i know that anyone we fight but we fight to the different thing so uh from from your answer i think um what straight men can learn from gay men is how to become sensitive yes right do you think so mm -hmm. yeah i could really you know i could really relate so much with you you just don't know <laughs> thank you so much all right last few questions oh my god i can't believe i'm ending i'm about to end this interview i'm really having fun with you Me too. um you know since you talk about you know you have been talking about inclusivity acceptance with your advocacy for mr gay world pageant and what it all represents right now including the pride and representation what are your thoughts about lesbians or butched joining a pageant like mr gay world someday would you be open to it i asked this question all right i asked this question because let's face it in miss universe now trans transgenders are already accepted so if we try to reverse and relate it to you would it be okay for you if a butch okay, or a lesbian yeah. joins mr gay world america or okay, mr gay world yeah i really agree with that 100 percent. if she are she or he yeah if she or he is already <laughs> transformed everything already and in the passport and the hormone and everything totally total look right it's be a man already why not because I'm standing here to fight for equality. If I don't want anyone to raise with each other. So if that lesbian, she or he believe that whatever she wanna be, why we don't support each other? We born in LGBTQ community, it's the same thing. Yeah, so me, I agree with that 100%. I am don't mind with that. I'm, I'm gonna be so happy if in one year in the future, if someone walk out and stand and be a lesbian and come and join on this pageant yeah i think right now like 2021 already we should open for that if like technically on the passport and the id on the hormone and everything you are look like a male already why you don't deserve your own happiness right to joy to follow your dream i yeah. agree you're so open-minded it really helps that uh you are already living there so it really helps you change uh, it really helps you change your perceptions and probably even become more vocal about mm -hmm. it in sharing it because you know you see that you know you are allies with a lot of people there in the u in the u.s compared if you were let's say still be staying in thailand because you probably might be facing a lot of opposition from a lot of people yeah so yeah that's right you know there's no doubt that everyone could relate to you as a everyone could go up to you as their big brother it feels like they can go up to you for anything for advice for, for tips you know or just how to navigate life in general so if you were to give an advice to a young gay teenager or kid about coming out because they might fear of discrimination what would you tell him uh, I'm going to say in any family, it depends, right? So I'm not going to like share up for anyone must come out. But I'm not going to say you don't no need to come out too. If you feel like if you come out, make you more happy, do for it. No need to get fear or whatever. Your parents, your mom, your dad, they're still your mom and your dad. No matter what you look like, no matter what you be, no matter what you're going to do in your life, you still their kid so don't be fair and be confident we are normal you can do whatever you want if you just tell them maybe you will get more more happy so you accept yourself your family support you will seem like okay compared to my family when i say that no matter what i do even i talk for the mr k world pageant right now they also okay whatever you want me to do in thailand just let me know i will support you forever yeah so i believe that no need to be fair and if you want to come out let's do it go for it i think 
in the end, end of the road, and in the end, you're gonna deserve your good thing, good life, and your own happiness. Yeah. And if you have something, don't wanna talk. If you want to talk to someone, I'm here. Can direct message to me or whatever. Yeah. Just come and talk to me, because I learn from my own experience. Yeah. What if um let's say you know great advice no doubt. What if um that kid tells you. But you know the reason why I'm so I'm so afraid to come out is because if I tell him if I tell my parents the truth, they might disown me. They might no longer want to see me because um, I'm going I'm go um, I'm doing something that is very contrary or very opposite from what they truly believe in. So how do you how do you reconcile that? You know. Um, coming out and being confident about your sexuality, but at the same time, you have to respect your parents, especially that, you know, we are, you know, we come from an Asian, we, we yeah, come from Asian, Asian culture, countries, right? yes. Asian culture, where tradition and con conservatism are very, very prevailing factors. Yeah, like, first of all, I need, uh, like I told you in the beginning, like need a time because some parents like we need to give them a time but i believe that no matter what in the end family is still family you you know right yeah like family is still family but if you think you're gonna make more is if you tell them or you come out gonna make more worse so just waiting for the right time and okay i have a right now i want to speak to all the parents who are watching me all over the world being a gay, if your son, your kid, your daughter being a gay or lesbian, we're not a bad guy. We're not a bad kid. We are normal and we didn't choose to be a gay, but we born with it. So no matter you're going to support me or not, but I just want to know, I, you're still my mom, you're still my parent. I still love you. And I believe that we are family. You are my family. Everything I do, I can be the best version of myself and I can be successful even I'm being a gay. So just believe in your kid. They can do that. Be not a bad. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I felt like you owned your truth there. You spoke from the heart. Like, yeah, based from your experience, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure if a lot of young kids will be watching this interview, they will be inspired to to go for it, to really come out with no inhibitions or no um, big things that they need to think about, right? So uh, this ends my interview. So one last question. Why do you think you should be the next representative of the U.S. in the next Mr. Gay World pageant? Yeah, I believe that I have a lot of potential in myself and i know that i have a lot of passion in myself so even i didn't born here but i'm proud to be american i'm proud to live here i'm i learned a lot of things in this country and that's why i decided to join for the mr k world usa and i know that as my education what did i study i can help lgbtq about hiv or no matter what about healthcare and i prepare a lot to for the for this pageant, yeah, I prepare a lot, like many, many things. I reach out a lot of people. I do my costume and I think I have a lot of passion to do this. So I believe that on that night on the stage, I'm going to get the sash to represent USA. And I hope the judges will see that once they finally see you there. <laughs> so for sure, know that they will really be looking at you and see you as a huge competitor for the upcoming pageant. I think at this time of inclusivity and everything, you know, inclusivity, everything that's happening about the pageant world, I think you really have a great shot in winning the, this, this forthcoming pageant. So good luck. Good luck, Jack. Thank you so Thank much, you so Thank much you for them. Thank you so much for doing this interview. No doubt, even in just one hour, I think like I have known you my entire life. So thank you for imparting your wisdom, knowledge, sharing your life experiences, 
not only to me but also to a lot of viewers who are also who are watching this interview thank you so much so as my last question can you give a message to all your fans supporters who will be rooting for you who are cheering you right now as you compete for mr k world america Okay, thank you so much for all my friends who support me. Like mostly I have a friend from the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, in Asian because I'm already the one who is being Asian uh, joy on this competition. And thank you so much for support me and I'm gonna do my best. If you believe in me, I believe in myself. I will get the crowd for you. Thank you so much for support me. Thank you. No, you're welcome. No words. Thank you. I think you will really do well. You will easily stand out knowing that I think I think you will easily stand out, not just because of the social issues prevailing, because there's Asian hate, Black Lives Matter, the need to the need to have an inclusion or acceptance prevailing in pageant, but because you know you're the overall package. I mean, you're not <laughs> only, you are not only good looking, but you are really very passionate about a lot of your advocacies, and I think you will definitely resonate well with the organizers, with the judges. I can feel that as early as now. So thank you. Thank you for sharing a part of your life to us, even for just one hour. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for having me tonight. I um, appreciate it. And nice to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And good night over there. Good luck. Have Stay a good day safe for your time, David. okay? <laughs> thank you so much. This ends my interview. I had so much fun getting to know you. It, had, it has been such a blast. And I hope the viewers, my viewers, are also feeling the same thing. So good luck, good luck. I can't wait to keep in touch with you after this. Uh, I, yeah. I, I can really feel a lot of big things are coming your way very, very soon. All right. Good night over there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Virtual bye. hugs all the way from Manila, Philippines. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you.